Good day and welcome to the Our City COVID-19 show. I am Vicky McCallum. In response to the worldwide pandemic and South Africa's 21-day lockdown, Cape Town TV has made the decision to collapse most of our in-house shows and instead bring you a daily bulletin updating you on the latest information and resources around the COVID-19 pandemic while unpacking deeper issues as they emerge. It's now day 11 of the lockdown and we want to hear from you. We welcome contribution from movements, healthcare providers and our audience. We want this program to be a two-way flow of information, so please get in touch with us via our social media platforms and our email. And now for the news. It is day 11 of the lockdown and the current number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in South Africa is 1,655 with 45 recoveries and 11 deaths. Let's take a look at today's infographic. Police in the Western Cape swooped on a mob looting a bottle store in Langa on the weekend. Alcohol trading is banned during the national lockdown. A video circulating on social media showed a group of people breaking down a door at a liquor shop. One suspect, a 33-year-old man, was arrested. Police spokesperson Novella Patalwa says they were looking for more suspects. Meanwhile, a Danoon tavern owner has been left seriously out of pocket after the city of Cape Town's Metro Police confiscated 500,000 rands worth of alcohol this weekend. Officers were tipped off about alcohol being sold from a vehicle in the area. Following a short pursuit of the car, they arrested two suspects who gave them the address of an illegal tavern in the area. There, police found three individuals selling prohibited goods and just over 35,000 rand in cash. The suspects were detained at the Milnerton Police Station. Three minors trying to stage a break-in at their primary school to retrieve toys confiscated from them before the lockdown have been arrested. The boys, aged 8, 9 and 11, were detained by Nyanga police after they allegedly crawled under the fence and were caught trying to open their classroom door by a security guard stationed at the school. Nyanga Station Commander Brigadier Vuyasile Kath says no one was allowed to be out during the lockdown, including children. The children have since been released into their parents' custody. As the number of COVID-19 cases increase in Kailicha, the Kailicha District Hospital has put in measures in place to curb the spread of the pandemic. We've got various rooms that we have prepared. And this are the two isolation rooms for those that we are not 100% sure if the person is accepted or what, or what. But now we, we separate them. And then we cluster them. These other areas, medical, surgical, and whatever, they are admitted according to different. So this is our isolation room that will stay in this area until the results come. There are now three confirmed COVID-19 cases in Kailicha, and as the number of cases are expected to increase, the Kailicha District Hospital has put in measures to deal with a certain number of COVID-19 patients. The hospital does not have the facility to treat COVID-19 patients, but can only do testing and isolation depending on the patient's condition. It is only a, uh, a conveyor belt when people get admitted here and tested to be positive then it refers them immediately it's supposed to refer them straight to tiger Bay hospital it doesn't have any capacity of that nature to deal with the virus at all the western cape government will start the covid 19 screening and testing program in town 2 and elite park in kailicha to manage the spread of the pandemic we really want Kailita to be ready to receive any eventualities that may come with the COVID virus. We're quite happy with the, with, with, the, with the report that the minister was giving as it relates to the Department of Health, National Department, State of Readiness. And we're convinced that the minister, he is convinced that he's working well with the Department of Health, Western Cape. 
So we, we, we are okay. As long as somebody is going to be able to we take our people to a proper place and process each case as they come, we are quite, we're quite okay. We are convinced as the KDF that we, we have a role as communities that we must play. One is to still encourage our people to stay at home, observe the lockdown, minimize infection. When people are finally infected, at least be processed as was agreed by the government. Screening and testing will also be done in Bishop Lavers, Philippi, Burgarp, Muscle Bay, as well as other areas. Octavian Jovo, Our City News, Kailicha. It's too early for informal food traders in the metro to celebrate amended national regulations allowing them to trade as the city of Cape Town has written to Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, COCTA Minister Nkosezana Dlamini Zuma for clarity. The city said despite the amendments it wanted to ascertain whether all spaza shops and informal food traders should be open and what permits would be required. Meanwhile, Small Business Development Minister Kumbodozo Nchavani says spaza shop support schemes would allow shop owners to buy goods from pre-selected wholesalers who had agreed to discounted prices after negotiating with the government. Small Business Emergency Relief measures to assist businesses in distress due to the national lockdown have been developed. Applicants are required to register on www.smmesa.gov.za. For more information, visit the departmental website www.nwpg.gov.za. We're going to take a short ad break. We'll be back. Welcome back. You're still watching Our City COVID-19 show with me, Vicky McCullum. We will be giving you the latest updates on the COVID-19 pandemic and sharing essential resources and information with you. Health Minister Zuelem Kize held a media briefing at the Kayalicha District Hospital on Friday, along with the Western Cape Health MEC, Norma French Mbombo. They shared details on the COVID-19 testing drive in the Western Cape. The initiative kicked off today. So important for us to make it happen that the community screening and testing has to happen. As the uh, minister has indicated that we have done the geomapping, remember when we were presenting our statements, we used to divide it according to how health is managing, according to the sub-district. Uh, so we managed to make it a point that at least in the metro, there should be area each and every sub-district out of the eight where we can be able to go and test. But not only just uh, taking the area out of the blue, but on the basis of the infection. You get to cases that are important in some of the areas where, like in the southern, where you get most of the cases that are important. Whereas in other areas, we find that there's been a local transmission which has got no association with the important case. So let's make an example now what we have announced. We say, first of all, in the eight areas in the metro, the Kailicha, because we are here in Kailicha. So Kailicha already has got two cases. And from our data, we've just realized that the town two area is the one that we have to start with. And also the Elita Park area on Monday, that's where we're going to start with. In the eastern, eastern is the, the area that covers the Strand and all of those and the, the Somerset. Uh, we've got an area called the Happy Valley in Blackheath. Also, we will be targeting. Um, and then we have got, in the, in the western side, you know that in Bokap, we've got already <laughs> two, two cases in that area, in the Bokap, which is we'll be doing on a Tuesday for the Bokap. And then the area in the Tigerberg area that includes the Bishop Levis and Elsie's and everything, um, we will do it on Monday, the whole of the Bishop Levis on Monday. And then the Clapfontein area, which covers the Philippi and all of those. For the rural areas, we had as many cases from the sub-districts. Again, in the rural areas, it's according to the, we're using municipality boundaries. So we have got the Garden Route, which has got, I think, nine municipalities, I can't recall. And then you'll find there in the Garden Route, the Mosel Bay is the one that will find that, specifically Kwanongaba. Uh, where there's a case which is, will be all in all those areas. I think it has got four wards uh, for the area of Nongaba in Moselbay. And then we have got also the Cape Wildlands, where we actually, the first case uh, of the outside metro 
was in the Cape Winelands, in the Drakenstein. So we are going to Drakenstein, but we'll find that there are other important cases. But the case that has been interesting is in MB Queen. So we're going to MB Queen. The Bishop Levis Action Community has planned an unconventional protest in which community members will protest within their yards wearing adequate protective gear to abide by lockdown regulations. This is an effort to draw attention to the dire state of the community now heightened by the lockdown. Community Liaison Officer Amanda David said the protest was aimed at getting the government to help cater to the needs of the community. Bishop Levis Action Community, a forum fighting social issues within the community, has planned a protest action abiding by lockdown regulations to highlight issues within the community amid screening. Media Liaison Officer Amanda Davids explains. When the lockdown was um, announced, unfortunately our people in the working class do not have money that's just there to use. And we knew that it would be a problem, um, but we decided to, okay, let's see what, what happens. And um, we are seeing people still on the street because we've got a whole lot of waste because people that doesn't, that's unemployed, that has to go outside to get money. So they're still doing that. They can't not do it because they don't have food in their homes. So we had to think of a way to help them. Um, we, as usual, we phoned everyone we know for sponsorships. The schools are, um, we have a principal at Black, that's um, part of Black, that's helping us. Um, he actually went into his stock room for the feeding scheme and he just emptied it. And um, we've got a pastor that's helping us. Um, so we, we had a, like, uh, we had a lunch meal for, for 250 people yesterday. But now this is a day-to-day -day thing. And um, we just decided, look, our people need food. So we need to find a way to get them food. And we cannot protest like we normally do, do shutdowns and go out on the streets. So uh, we want people to obey the law. So the lockdown is still on. We are doing it within our, uh, staying in our yards, holding our placards and taking the empty pots and pans. There is no food. So now we're just banging on it outside. Mm. And that we will do that for today. David says, the lockdown does not consider the working class and says a government needs to start thinking about them. We just want government to recognize this lockdown, there was never a thought for the working class. The businesses were thought about, the middle class was thought about, but nobody ever thought what is going to happen in the working class. They need to think about it. They need to think about dispensing food parcels. They're asking people to wear masks and gloves and use sanitizer. Our people cannot afford this. And um, they need to find a way to get the proper, um, to get, just get food to our people, get the proper medical equipment to our people. Look, um, a lot of these people use the day hospital on a daily basis. They're not getting the medication at the moment because it's locked down. And if, you, if it's not priority, you can't go. So, I mean, they need to start, really start thinking, what can they do for the working class? and make it work because the lockdown will never work if people are hungry within their houses. She says the protest is not aimed to blame, but is a means to help government ensure that everyone stays in their homes. It's not, it's not a protest or aimed at blaming anyone. It's just we need help and we need help very urgently. Because if, if we don't get help, the, con the infection will just spread because people will not stay in their homes. So we basically want the government to come help us so we can help them. For Our City News, I am Stephanie Pitt, Bishop Lavis. Earlier today, Helga Janssen spoke to Ashley Potts, the director of the Cape Town Drug Centre. Good, good morning, Ashley. Uh, this is Helga from Cape Town TV. Thank you so much for your time. I know that this is a new world that we're entering, um, the way that we do almost everything. So I'm sure you for I'm speaking to you from your living room and you're speaking to me from a bedroom. So here we go. Uh, Ashley, we are in a, as I'm sure, um, you know, we are all experiencing the COVID-19 moment and how the world is turned upside down. Um, in your line of work at the Cape Town Drug Center, speak us to how um, drug addicts and, uh, and, and, and health and his body, the alcohol, how are they managing this moment? Yeah, thank you, Hauge, and thanks for the opportunity to join you this morning um, in this artificial intelligence uh, time in our world. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's not been an easy period 
um, since the announcement, there was obvious panic um, that that you know erupted with users not knowing where they're going to get help from. Um, our treatment centers were not regarded as essential services, and we were then forced to shut down as well. So treatment centers, as it were, was the life source to many an addict um, or a substance um, use disorder victim. And what we find now with the added challenge of the ban on nicotine and alcohol um, is that many addicts would, you know, use the nicotine to suppress some of the cravings and to calm down. Um, we try to encourage them to move away from it totally, but it can happen abruptly. With the president making the decision, and I believe it was in the best interest of the country, and they thought through these things. However, the reality on the ground is that craving alcohol particularly um, is, is a real medical challenge. And so a lot of clients has been calling my phone numbers out there in the public domain. And so I've been getting inundated calls from wives that are being forced to find alcohol. And you had seen obviously that uh, they had broken in to get the alcohol. And many of these are really just uh, scoundrels that are, are, are just taking advantage, but they are the, those that are desperately needing an alcohol um, fix or a hit. And so what happens is uh, between 24 to 48 hours, they will start feeling the withdrawal. And the symptoms to that is I mean, the heavy sweating, shortness of breath, headaches. And after a day of not having alcohol, they could enter a phase where they start getting um, you know, uh, uh, seizures, um, you know, palpitations, serious heavy palpitations. In the Grecian actually, actually, yeah, what you're describing, of course, now is the the after the, the effects, the withdrawal effects. You mentioned earlier that um, the drug center is not an essential service. So how are you operating now? So we um, uh, all treatment centers. So I'm also the chairman for the substance service sector in the in the Western Cape. And so we've been having conversations with other directors across the province. Um, and so most of them had set up WhatsApp conversations and groups with um, some of the current clients. Um, some of the inpatient treatment centers um, has stopped the intake of any new clients so that they can deal with those that are in the center already. Um, and also contain uh, the spread of the virus or to help flatten the curve. Mm -hmm. as so we are currently resorting to, again, artificial intelligence, just working with, um, uh, you know, internet and WhatsApp and messaging, um, Facebook messaging. So that has been the current means of operation. It's not uh, ideal because a lot of our clients, I mean, I still get SMS messaging, just the normal messages, uh, because they don't have a smartphone. So they, yeah. they can, be, and so what I do is if I get an SMS, I will just phone the client, um, ask them if I can call them, and then I'll call them. Um, and our current scenario at Cape Town Drug Counseling Center is I've got all my social workers on standby. And so if I get a WhatsApp, I send it to my social workers, they then process that information and send the, um, the client a response to help them through their problem. Ashley, can I ask you, the relationship with DSD, we saw this weekend that um, thousands of homeless people have been moved into, I'm going to call it safe spaces, right? Which sure. has been managed by the city and by the province. Um, and we know amongst the homeless community that drug addiction and, and, and challenges and struggles with, with, with addiction is rife. Um, what is your, is there a, a relationship between um, organizations such as yourselves to perhaps make an intervention at those um, safe spaces? So this becomes quite a challenge. I'll also um, reference it as safe spaces. So the safe spaces that they have been moved into has been done with um, consultation 
uh, with members other than those in the sector. Um, my recent conversation as of Saturday evening and yesterday morning early with two of the other directors is that we had no communication um, regarding how they are going to deal with, um, as the Department of Social Development, um, how they're going to deal with the users um, within that context of the safe space. So these camps has been set up. I've sent an email to our MEC and also to um, Alderman um, that is responsible for the Strandfontein camp specifically, mm. requesting for um, opportunity to give input and assist, knowing very well that more than 60% conservatively of all homeless have a substance use disorder and a dependence on alcohol and other substances. The, the need for proper medical intervention is critical and it could be well, devastating if not managed properly. So actually your recommendation then would be to province, but perhaps also to the national department is that services such as yours should be um, deemed essential, essential support service to um, social development. The, yes, I'm, I'm almost choking in my words, Alga. Thanks for that one. The reality is, as a director of a centre, I've got three across the Cape and other directors as well, we are also concerned about the anxiety around our social work staff and clinical uh, teams. Mm -hmm. So their, their anxiety is real and I understand also that they, their fears need to also be taken into account. But yes, absolutely. Um, treatment services should be regarded as essential services because the medical um, dimension of working with an, uh, a substance use disorder patient um, is something that cannot be ignored and it is a medical challenge. Actually, before I let you go, let, allow me the opportunity to, um, to, to, to uh, um, let me give you the opportunity to give out some uh, social media details, um, cell numbers, if people need to get in touch um, and have an urgent um, um, need. Sure, I, I just quickly also want to say that I am really uh, wanting to be of support to the Department of Social Development. Uh, Minister Shauna Fernandez has been doing a sterling work. We've heard about the 53 million that has been now allocated for PD. Um, yeah. So she's got a heavy task on her hand. So um, yeah. yeah, for those that are out there that are struggling with a family member that is needing help, there is the immediate lifeline that you can use, and that is 021-461-1111. And then um, to contact us, you could use our Facebook page, which is Drug Center, um, and, and then also our Instagram page, same thing, Drug Center. And uh, you can also contact me directly on 082-887-6448. And I'd Actually, encourage thank you so much. Can I say just, Ilga, I'm going to encourage people to send me a WhatsApp um, or a message, you know, and I will respond as soon as I can, and it usually doesn't take longer than an hour. There you have it, viewers, if those numbers, um, and I'm sure that our, at our, our, our technical team will put those numbers up on the screen again for you to access. Ashley from Cape Town TV, thank you for all your hard work and all the best to your support staff and your social workers out there. Thank you, Helga. Thanks for the opportunity to be with you. Thank Love you. you guys. Thank you. Bye bye. It's time for an ad break. When we come back on Save and Global, we'll respond to the latest fake news. Welcome back. Before the ad break, we had Vicky McCullen with the latest news. A video circulated on social media this past weekend claimed that contaminated test um, kits from China were being used for door-to-door -door COVID-19 blood and DNA testing. The Western Cape government has labelled this fake news, clarifying that COVID-19 tests were performed Welcome back. Before the ad break, we had Vicky McCullen with the latest news. 
A video circulated on social media this past weekend claimed that contaminated test kits from China were being used in door-to-door -door COVID-19 blood and DNA testing. The Western Cape government has labelled this fake news, claiming that COVID-19 tests performed with a mild swab which is clinically safe and not contaminated. In another, in another incident, a well-known publication published a story about Bill Gates' support for South Africa as a site for testing a COVID-19 vaccine, which was false. The online news has retracted the story and said that the Gates Foundation was supporting South Africa by donating testing kits and through research. If you're unsure of a video or WhatsApp audio you've received, you can send that message to AfriCheck. It has set up a WhatsApp group to help citizens verify that information is correct. You can add them on 082-7093-527. Well, that is all I have on the fake news front. Now we'll show you two public service announcements, one from Health e News and the other created by the World Health Organization, showing you how to keep active during the lockdown. Many of you watching this are now at home to protect your health and that of those nearest you. But there is much you can do to stay healthy at home, like eating a healthy and nutritious diet, avoiding sugary drinks, not smoking, and being physically active. Take a walk if you can go outside, do an online workout or yoga, and don't sit in the same position for long periods. Getting up and moving for at least three minutes several times a day helps. Caring for your mental health is also key. You can do this by talking with people you trust, listening to music, reading a book, or playing a game. And now for our social media. Share your thoughts with us on Facebook. We are Our City CT and on Twitter at Our City CT. We encourage you to send any COVID-19 questions. This is a time that we need to come together as a nation, as if you're not sure with something, send your questions and we will try to find the answers for you. These are the popular has hashtags on Twitter. We will also read some of your Facebook questions and comments about the show. If you want to be a part of this conversation, you can do so by visiting our Facebook page using the hashtag CTVCOVIDshow. These are the trending hashtags on Twitter. Peggy Kele, the minister is under fire on a number of fronts. Violent action by police are up there, as in banding of alcohol consumption. Tweets, are also, tweets also want to know what is he doing about the terrible gender-based violence statistics during lockdown. News 24. The country's biggest news site is under fire on an incorrect story about the great foundation testing of vaccine in South Africa. It has apologized to Bill and Melinda Gates. New Development Bank. South Africa's Treasury looks set to take a 19 billion rand loan from BRICS backed financial institution. This follows downgrades to junk by rating agencies Moody's and Fitch. The government desperately needs emergency funds to fight the coronavirus pandemic. 
We will find the answers to these questions soon, but in the meantime, please check your inboxes where we will reply. After the ad break, we will be crossing over to Vicky McCullen with the resources and places of safety that you can go to during this lockdown period. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still tuned to our study, The COVID Show, with me, Vicky McCullum. Before the ad break, Octavia and Lovu looked at what the nation was buzzing on our social media platforms. If you want to watch the repeat of this program, you can tune in again at 6 p.m. for your latest news around the COVID-19 pandemic and to see what other Capetonians are doing to keep safe. Speaking about what Capetonians are doing, here are some of the organizations helping communities stay safe. Food Forward SA, established in 2009, is the largest food redistribution organization in South Africa. To get help with food or assist Food Forward SA, please contact Michael Davids on 0215310210 or email michael at foodforwardsa.org. The Saki Bachman Center, SBWC, is a center for women and children who are survivors of abuse. For more information on how you can help, please contact them on 021-4245660 or email them on info at wmce.co.za. Sisters Incorporated, for anyone currently at heightened risk for domestic violence due to the lockdown, please get in touch with Sisters Incorporated, a facility providing shelter for abused women and children. Their contact details are 021-7974190. That's all we have for you today, but we have something to say. We want to hear, if you have something to say, we want to hear from you. Send your comments, news and questions to us via Facebook at Our City CT or on Twitter at Our City CT. You can also get in touch with us on email at our city, our city at capetowntv.org. This is the time we need to come together as a nation. So if you're not sure about something, send us your questions and we'll try to find the answers for you. You can also call us on 021-4480-488. For Our City News and me, Vicky McCallum, have a great day. Goodbye. <laughs>